My name is Maxi Strobel, and I'm a postdoc at the Department for Integrated Mathematical Oncology at the Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa, in Florida. I'm excited to attend my first page conference, and I'm doing so because I've noticed there's a number of interesting parallels between work being carried out in the pharmacometrics community and some of the work that we're doing here at Moffitt. And so I'd be interested to learn more about the, what, what you do and, and get to know your community. Um, specifically, what I'd like to discuss is work that we are doing on what we call adaptive cancer therapy. This is a concept that we've developed here at Moffitt in an attempt to try and improve the management of drug resistance in oncology, in particular to targeted therapies. Because one pattern we can see there a lot, and this is just an example here for prostate cancer, pay, is that we have an initial good response, and but that eventually the tumor starts to regrow despite treatment. Um, and what we think is going on here, at least in part, is that we have resistant cells that are existing prior to treatment, or at least kind of tolerant cells prior to treatment, um, and that, being, that are being held in check by competition. But as we tr start treating and, and treating harshly in an attempt to cure, we free these resistant cells from competition and allow them to expand. As a workaround to this, um, a number of people here at the IMO have proposed what they call adaptive therapy. And, and the idea of this is that we treat enough to maintain control of the tumor, but that when we can, we reduce treatment or even withdraw it completely in order to maintain sensitive cells, which subsequently suppress the growth of resistant cells. And the graph you can see here is actually from a patient here at Morphe that is being treated adaptively um, for prostate cancer. And from the results we have at the moment, the initial results are promising. So there's interest in trying to expand this to other settings. And this has been one of my key research focuses for the past couple of years. To do so, I've said, first carried out a couple of um, the more theoretical studies where we've looked at what are the factors that make adaptive therapy work. And to do so, I've built an agent-based model where I literally just assume cells are either sensitive or resistant, and they occupy a site on a square lattice. And what I find is that despite this very simple model and, and very few assumptions, adaptive therapy tends to be um, beneficial over continuous therapy in quite a wide parameter range. And that's very promising from the perspective of potentially being able to translate this beyond prostate cancer. And we further kind of study this in more detail by characterizing the roles of the initial tumor composition of the cell kinetics in terms of resistance costs and cell turnover and the tumor spatial architecture. And if you'd like to learn more about this work, I've put QR codes to publications here in the corner. In addition, I'm involved in a project uh, where we try to develop an adaptive protocol for PARP inhibitor treatment. And to do so, we've carried out a number of uh, in vitro experiments, which we've used to, be to develop a mathematical model. You can see fits of the model here, as well as predictions to sort of intermittent treatment schedules here in this panel at the bottom. And so what I'm now going to do going forward here is explore different plausible strategies um, in order to decide what may be a better way of, of preventing or at least delaying the resistance in PARP inhibitors. If you're interested in learning more about any of this work, please reach out to me and you can email me either here at this address or, or reach me on Twitter. And I'm looking forward to talking to you.